Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching and being here with me today. If you have been wanting a video on layered clothing, hit that like button and let me know in the comments any problems or issues you're having because I would be more than happy to help you with it. So today we'll be working on layered clothing. This is not my mesh, but I thought it was a great simple mesh that we could use to explain how to do this. And I have gotten permission so that we can use this item for our video. I'm working on it for a client and I thought I might as well show you how to do this. So when you're in your file where you've made your item, by the way, it's called layer clothing, but obviously this isn't really clothes. It's a whole avatar in a sense, but it's called layer clothing because it's layering over your avatar. So you want to go ahead and take that control C, copy it over as you can see, copy one item, and then you move on over to this file, mannequin page template. Now Roblox may tell you to go to a um, open rig, a rig template. Now that actually doesn't have pages, even though it said that it would. Maybe they changed that at this point. But I found this file. I'm, I'm going to put it in the description. It will be a Google file. So you'll be able to click on that and download it. And Google Drive will always scan for viruses. So you don't need to worry about adding anything to your computer you do not want. So that's problem number one which is you're using the wrong file. And so maybe that's why you're struggling. Problem number two might be that you didn't realize you need to make sure to click on collection before you control V this item in. You want it to fit under the collection so that it fits perfectly. Problem number three might be that, look, this item is not actually the proper size proportionately to the armature. So what we need to do is go into edit mode, select it and scale it so that it will fit. That should work now. If you want to double check, you can always go kind of move it and you can even move the armature, which I'll show you in a little bit, to view in front, but I don't want to do that quite yet. I think that will work, so let me just undo so that I'll make sure that mesh is going to be in the exact proper spot. Now, the next thing you might find when you're working with this file is as clipping issues. So you can hit in and open up your tabs over here with the view open. Make sure your clip start is to now. Let's look at the next step. I've made sure that it's all under the same collection. I want to go ahead and unhide these cages. So now you'll be able, if I were to hide the dock, you're going to see a little man here, okay? and you're just going to want to unhide that. And here was the next problem. For some reason, Roblox has two underscores in their file. So if you have it that way, it's gonna really cause havoc because you must have the name be exactly the same. So I'm going to double click here and I'm gonna write duck one and put that in front of outer cage. I need duck one underscore outer cage. You're going to name your file whatever item it is, okay? Just make sure that whatever mesh, whatever you've named that mesh, and it should have a distinct name. You do not want to leave it as a cube or anything like that because Roblox will give you errors later. Um, just make sure that you've also then put it in front of the cages. So now you can see the cage, and now we need to bring these items over together. So the next section after we've named the items is to do skinning weights. So the first thing is we need to click on your item first. Then we want to hit control and armature over here under collection. Now we have both of them. Then we hit control P and you'll find it's going to say set parent to and we want set it to automatic weights. Okay, now you're going to find a running man over here at the side. Click on the running man click on viewport display and move that armature in the front. We'll be able to see now how well it's working. And in fact, if you're not sure, this would be the moment to hit one and get it set into place. Hopefully we're pretty good. Um, maybe we should have moved it a little bit. I think that this will work. So we will keep it as it is. All right. 
So now we click off the item, we hit shift, and then we need to click on these bones. Once we've clicked on the bones, then we need to click on the clothing item while holding shift. Then we change to from object mode to weight paint. And now we want to click on weights. We want to click on limit total. And we want to click on four. It's already set up for me. In order for you to play around and make sure that this is all working, you can actually hide the cages. You don't need to see them now for one, but you also can click on the bone by holding alt and click on the bone. That's going to show you if this works or not. Then you hit R to rotate and move it and you can see Ducky's moving fine. Now, one problem that I had with this is that here, let me show you. When I move this, his whole body is moving as well. So I'm going to do the best that I can. It's not going to be perfect, but I'm gonna do the best that I can to fix this problem by going in and subtracting. So right now it's drawing. I want it to subtract and take away some of this uh, light blue and the more blue that it is, the less it will move, guys. So we don't really need it to move and we definitely don't need the head to move. We want the head to stay the same when the arms are flapping away. So this is gonna take some time, guys, but I'm gonna go in and do this and I will have to play around with it for quite a while. And I found I couldn't get it perfectly done, but I got it close. So let's see, it's already improved tremendously. That's about the best I can get it because the body is pretty stuck to the arm. It's another reason why when you build, you'll often see in these videos where the arms are straight out, like we're making a T. That is because when you model under the armpits and arms, it's very difficult if you've modeled it side by side to get those cages on. So a hot tip for future building is to build it more outwards. Now, of course, you'll have a little bit of a difficulty though with the cages because Roblox has made their cages as such that they're to the side. So just, I don't know, Roblox should have probably changed that, but it's what it is for now. Let me go ahead and check all of these areas. Whoops, I forgot I'm in this mode. I need to hit Control, I need to hit Alt, and then that will move it over. So I want to go ahead and get rid of some of this over here. Let me take care of that, guys, and I'll be right back. Okay, we've accomplished that. Now at this point, if you actually used um, Roblox's rig file, that they provided, you will need to append the inner and outer cages. So make sure that you do that. I did not, so therefore, I'm not gonna have to do that at this time. Okay, so we wanna get out of the painting mode and back into object mode and click on the outer cage. Okay, we wanna just make sure we're clicked here. Gonna have to turn these on so that we can click on it. So you don't need the inner cage. The inner cage is exactly where it needs to be for Roblox. But what we do need to do is make sure that the outer cage is showing over the dot. This is the part that drives everyone nuts. And there's a couple of tips that I'm gonna provide for you. One is to, when you're in sculpt mode, you can actually turn on this butterfly and it means that it is going to do the same thing on one side as it does on the other. So that will help. You wanna go from object mode to sculpt mode and you wanna make sure that you're highlighted on the outer cage. You obviously don't wanna change the duck, right? Now you want to see the duck or your item of course, because you need to be able to get this to be over the duck. So here's where you just are gonna have to be patient. You hold down or you click 
you're just gonna do whatever you can. I'll start here because I can already see some of the legs. And so as you're doing this, you are bringing out that cage so that it's going to fit over the whole item. And this is what you wanna do so that you can cover it all. And the reason why is anything that you want to fit over this dock is going to need to have that cage on it. It becomes an outline, if you will. And this is where you must have patience. If you want it to be perfect, then you will have to go into edit mode and do some fiddle sticking there. Right now, I'm really just going along and I don't need this perfect. But look, it's per here's an example. I can go into edit mode and as you can see, we have an area that's been created here. I hit Alt Z and it's like, wait a minute, why? Why is, did that not come? Well, this particular line didn't make it. So I go here and I can pull it out and that will bring out the item, okay? And you can go as slow as you want. Obviously, the neater you do this, the better off you're gonna be in the long run, but you could, I mean, this is why people are not doing layered clothing every day. It actually takes a long time and it's not that fun. <laughs> the creating process is a blast. This part, not so much. And as you can see, it's very challenging to see what in the world you're doing. I'm just trying to get these items out and covered. So you don't want to spend much time in edit mode, okay? You really don't. You want to be in sculpt mode and just go along and do the best you can. Okay, because it'll come, see, and the further back you are, then it will come faster, but if you need it to be really tight and neat, then you're gonna have to go in there and do some cleaning up. I, I'm sure you don't need to see me doing this entire caging. Uh, you're, I'm really going to just be hitting the same button over and over and over again. So I am going to leave it at this for now. I will be right back with you guys and show you the results of my crazy <laughs> outer cage. No, I, I, I. Definitely there are people that will have it perfectly matched up. But with this being such a huge duck, I mean, I can only do so much, folks, okay? So I'll be back with you in just a minute. While I'm working on this, of course, you can see it's totally crazy and I'm shaping, changing the shape of the cage very much. But I wanted to say a tip. If you're trying to get in those crevices, you could, you know, hit shift Hold on to the vertices in edit mode and pull it all the way out so that if you see something as you pulled out something else, just keep hitting shift. Obviously, I'm not going to leave this out, but at least it's now out of my way and I was able to make such progress. So I wanted to just give you that hot tip that maybe that'll be helpful when you are going through this whole process of shaping that outer layer. Be right back. Another helpful hint for when you're doing the outer cage and you're trying to get it perfect, you can go on the inside of your mesh and see, is there any part of this cage that is coming through? If it is, you obviously want to move that down. So then you just push it down and it should start to move some of that cage out and in our case here we'll start seeing yellow and that will let us know ah we got it fixed it starts to move things lower especially when we're talking about the neck area areas that are just going to be so complicated to get um, you can of course move to line and do it this way and move the whole thing down and then you, you really start to see what's happening. Just make sure that you double check on the outside. 
because if you stay in here too long, <laughs> it's kind of like you're in the dark in a way because you're not actually seeing what you're doing on the outside. So like that seems a bit much. So I'll scroll out and see if I'm improving the situation. So hope that helped. There also just a reminder, this is the part of the process where people want to quit. It's just really in labor intensive. And so if you find that you're at that point where you want to just say, you know what, I don't want to do this. Well, hire someone, right? Or sign up for Patreon. Uh, I have a Patreon and I offer this service as part of the Patreon. So then you don't have to do this. You can stay and focus on the creative part and I can help you with the rest. So, you know, just thought I would throw that out there. That this is the moment where don't give up on your dream. Just maybe put it on pause and come back to it. Let somebody else do this part for you uh, if you're unable to manage it. And it's totally fine. You still model the item. And hey, maybe you don't, you're not even at that point. Well, obviously I make models as well. So, you know, look at my Patreon and see if that'll work for you. Now we're ready to export and we can be in either way. You can see it looks crazy. I'm not sure how it's gonna turn out, but we'll hope that it looks positive. We'll see here in a minute. We're gonna export it. You just file, export, and go to the file that you need to, the FBX extend. One tip you wanna make sure is the scaling. You might wanna put the scale at a zero point, hold on, the 0 0.01, depending on what you've used. In my case, it will be just a one point scale, but I just wanted to mention that. You also wanna click on armature and turn off the add leaf bones. We do not want that, so unclick that. And then you export and we will check this out over in studio. See you there. When you do this, you want to import the 3D, I should have just showed it to you, import the 3D file and pick on your item. And you're going to find errors here. It may or may not matter. You just go through and double check that. There are often errors with the, with the caging, so don't stress about it. And then you import the item, making sure that it was successful. So I wanted to come and test it and it looked like it worked. It is pretty good. <laughs> you can see my Roblox items coming through it and it's a little bit more. This is why you want to perfect that outer cage so that it will look just perfect for you. But generally speaking, it works and we've got a pretty good outfit here. The only problem will be the jumping up and down but we already knew about that, that they stick together, the arm and the tummy. But you know what? It's fine. It doesn't matter that much. But just keep that in mind when you are making your meshes so that you can be sure to um, get that just right. Well, if you have any questions at all, just let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful for you on how to create that layered clothing item. Now, if you're wanting to learn how to actually make UGCs, then be sure to subscribe, hit the like button, or sign up for my Patreon. I am active in the Discord and will be so willing to help you with any questions that you might have. So thank you so much for watching. I've enjoyed spending time with you. I hope you've enjoyed spending time with me. Bye-bye.